perspective. Well, let's start off by looking at this graph right here. See this curve, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna pick two points along the curve and we're gonna draw a secant, okay? So that's this line right here that cuts through the curve at two points. And I'm gonna label this first point x, f of x, meaning if I put the x value into the function f, out comes the output f of x, right? If I go a little bit further to the right, we'll call that distance h. Now I'm at x plus h, and if I go up to the function, okay, up to the graph, my output is f of x plus h. Remember, whatever's in the parentheses, that's the input. f of x plus h, that's the output, that's the y value. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the slope between these two points. Now, you can see what's happening is here, this graph is actually starting off at a very steep angle, and it's getting less and less steep as it goes along, right? But between these two points, we're finding the average rate of change, okay, or the average slope, okay, or the average increase between these two points. And so we're gonna use our slope formula, and you probably remember from before, the slope formula is uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So all I did is I took this y value minus this y value, f of x plus h minus f of x, okay, divided by this uh, x value minus this x value, so x plus h minus x. So are you with me so far? So all we're doing is we're just finding a, a formula for the slope, okay, so m equals the change in y over the change in x, that's what these triangles means, delta y uh, divided by delta x. The change in y means we're subtracting the y values, the change in x means we're subtracting the x values, that's our formula for the slope. Okay, the rise over run, sometimes you learned it that way. And then all I'm doing is I'm substituting in these values here, okay, to get, to get where I'm at right here with the difference quotient. Okay, so now we're gonna change the notation up a little bit for you. So instead of writing m for the slope, we're gonna write f prime of x. So this little apostrophe here, we say f prime, and this is actually the derivative, okay? Sometimes it's written as dy dx, Okay, so dy is like delta y, like the change in y over the change in x. And in order to find out what this derivative is, we're just doing the difference quotient. So difference means you're subtracting, quotient means we're dividing, so together they call it the difference quotient. But you can see here this x and this negative x, they canceled out, just leaving us with h in the denominator. So it simplifies down a little bit. Now, as h approaches zero, we're doing a limit here, what that means is this distance is getting smaller, 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 smaller. So that means this point is moving along this curve, okay, until these two points actually coincide, okay? So the difference between these points is getting smaller until what happens is you're getting not the average rate of change, but the instantaneous rate of change. Let me see if I can draw that in here for us, like that, okay? Because this point is moving along the curve like that as h is getting smaller and smaller. So are you with me so far? Okay, so all the derivative is, what's a derivative? It's a formula for the slope any place along the graph. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, when we simplify the difference quotient, we're gonna get an expression, okay, that'll allow us to find out when we put the x value in, what the slope is at that point along the graph. Let's do some examples, you'll see what I mean. This first one is just kind of a simple one, f of x equals 2x minus three. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, we're gonna do the difference quotient, so f of x plus h minus f of x. Okay, so if I put x plus h in for x, what do I get? I get, let me switch markers here for us. Okay, this is gonna be two times x plus h minus three, okay, minus, f of x, f of x is this original function here, so I'm gonna just put it in parentheses, minus 2x minus three, all divided by h, okay? So now if I distribute and simplify, we get 2x plus 2h minus three, I'm gonna distribute this negative here, so I get a negative 2x plus three, all divided by h, and you can see the 2x and the negative 2x cancel, the three and the negative three cancel, and we have two h divided by h, the h's cancel, and remember with the difference quotient, okay, this is the limit as h is approaching zero, okay, but you can see here we're just left with two. Okay, so now why just two? Well, if you look at this equation here, you can see this is actually the formula for a line. 
if we were to graph this line, what would it look like? It has a y-intercept of negative 3, and it has a slope of 2. So it looks something like that. So no matter where you are along this line, the slope is always going to be 2. So remember, the difference quotient, the derivative, okay, and the slope, these all mean the same thing. The slope is always a constant 2. Okay, let's do a more challenging example. So this one here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use our difference quotient, okay? So what do we have? We have f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h, okay? So we're going to put x plus h in place of x. So wherever we see x on the right side, we're going to replace it with what we're putting in for x, which is x plus h. That's our input. We've got x plus h squared plus... 2 times x plus h, okay, so that's all this first part here, minus f of x. f of x is this whole original function, so I'm just going to substitute that in, all divided by h. Okay, now the rest of this is just arithmetic, but let's see if we can simplify it down. So we have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared, when we FOIL that out, plus 2x plus 2h minus x squared minus 2x all divided by h. Okay, so we're going to cancel out the x squareds. The 2x's also cancel. And we're left with 2hx plus h squared plus 2h all divided by h. Now you can factor out an h in the numerator and you're left with 2x plus h plus 2 all divided by h. And you can see these h's are going to cancel cancel out. So now keep in mind that we're actually finding the limit as h approaches 0. So at this point we're left with 2x plus h plus 2. As h approaches 0 I'm going to put 0 in place of h. So that's gone. So that's just going to be 2x plus 2. So what we have now is f prime of x, okay, which represents our derivative, remember, equals 2x plus 2. So what does this mean? Well depending on what x is, the slope, okay, the river represents the slope. The slope is going to be changing. So let's take a look at what this graph looks like. Let's see if we can draw a sketch right here. So let's factor this. So if we factor this, this is going to be x times x plus 2. So that means it's going to be crossing at 0 and negative 2. That means the axis of symmetry is going to be at negative 1. If we put in negative 1, what do we get? Negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. So it looks just like that. All right. So it's a parabola. Okay, so notice what happens. Let's say x equals 1. If we put 1 in, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4. So that means if we go over here at 1, okay, this is curving up a little bit more like that. If we go here to 1 and we go up to the, to the point on the graph that corresponds with x equals 1, that slope, okay, that instantaneous rate of change is 4.